Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report, your daily source for black news, views, and opinions. Today is Tuesday, September 20th, and I'm Mimi Brown. And I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, important information and dates you need to know in regards to student loan debt forgiveness, like when to apply deadlines and when payments will resume. Meanwhile, a Georgia Senate hopeful attempting to pull on heartstrings of Americans weeks before the midterm elections with a new revelation. And we're going to let you know what that is. Then prosecutors getting an inch closer to finding the cause of death for Elijah McClain with a release of a new report. Now, you recall he's the black man who died in police custody in 2019. Plus, the black TikToker is the most followed on the app, and we'll tell you how he makes thousands of dollars right from his phone. And Kanye West's Yeezy Cherry trademark hits a snag with the list of new restrictions. We have all that and so much more. This is our voice and our truth, so let's get it. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Today we start with news on the student loan debt forgiveness program. Now when the program takes effect, an estimated 43 million Americans are expected to have all or some of their federal student loan debt erased. With October just around the corner, there are some important dates you need to know. Right now there is no official date for when the governor, the government will start accepting applications, but financial aid experts say by early October there should be an online paper or some sort of paper paper form to fill out. You can register to be notified when the application is available by going to www.ed.slash subscriptions. It's on your screen, soulmates, uh, to receive your loan forgiveness before the payment pause ends. The Department of Education recommends people apply for relief before November 15th. And if your entire loan balance is in a race like some 23 million borrowers, President Biden is extending the payment pause through the end of the year until New Year's Day of 2023. At that point, interest will start again and regular payments will go back into effect. And New Year's Eve of next year is the final deadline for the one-time student loan forgiveness. There was uh, so much to uh, unpack there. So there were four things I said I wanted to um, just go over again just to make sure that we all got that because I need to take these notes myself. Yeah. There's so much here. Um, so by October, by next month, there should be an online paper form to fill out, an, a paper online or a paper form to fill out that you can mail back in. I'm sure they'll give you the address. But you can also be notified uh, when that form is coming out by going to www.ed.gov. There um it's right there on your screen, so you can write that down and go there and put in like your email address, and it will tell you when that application is coming out so that you can fill that out. Um, and to receive your loan forgiveness before the payment pause ends, we know the payment pause is, this is the last time for the payment pause, um, you must fill out that application by November 15th. Um, so you'll wanna get that taken care of. And fourth, the final thing, the deadline for the one-time student loan debt forgiveness, it takes effect, um, it, the, the deadline is December 31st. So if you have not filled out your application by December 31st of 2023, so not, not this year, but next year, you will not be able to take advantage of the student debt forgiveness program mm -hmm. that Biden uh, has put in place. You know, Mimi, I'm really happy that we were able to uh, give some of those key dates. And again, like you said, I might need to uh, watch our, the beginning of our show over again to go over everything because it is a lot. And that's the only flaw that I feel uh, is with lot. this program because we have been waiting for this for a very long time and then we get it and it is simply overwhelming. And so I actually do believe that that was on purpose for it to be overwhelming because what happens when stuff is overwhelming for people, people end up not taking advantage of mm -hmm. it and knock themselves out of the the running and so um i believe he's like hey we're putting it in front of you so either you can go and get it or not but also i do want to add in one piece because there were a lot of people that paid down their student loans during the freeze they were like hey you know what i'm not gonna not pay my loans i'm still gonna pay so right. for those people you can still get certain people can get a refund if you paid during the pandemic um and that started in march 2020 you can get a refund and then apply for forgiveness and so uh that's on the ap there's also oh excuse me you can go to student8.gov to find out if you're eligible for that because i do believe that is one group of people that were like hey we did the right thing we kept we kept paying right. mm -hmm. what happens 
for us. So studentaid.gov will help those people out. Okay, you know, I love all that. And like you said, you got to have patience. So to all our soulmates, when you fill out all this information, when you turn it in, make sure you do it properly mm -hmm. the first time around. And in addition to student loan forgiveness, the Biden administration has proposed a new rule to change to create a new income-driven repayment plan that will substantially reduce future monthly payments. So hopefully uh, students don't get into this situation again. So yeah. try no, to avoid that. That's a good that. point, uh, right. Romeo, because right. if you make zero dollars, then you pay zero dollars. That's mm -hmm. how that income-based repayment plan works. So mm -hmm. um, like Demi said, studentaid.gov. Um, the other website that we mentioned is on the screen. If we could put it back on the screen. You just want to make sure you have all the information because we don't mm -hmm. want our soulmates mm -hmm. to miss out on getting their student mm -hmm. loans forgiven. Yes. It's $10,000. It may not be. And if you had a Pell Grant, it's $20,000. We may say, oh, and complain. It's not as high as we want it to be, but I will still take it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And like I said, there are going to be so many people given the $10,000, had the opportunity, and still not meet those yeah. deadlines and, and could miss out. So mm -hmm. uh, happy that we were able to give that to our soulmates today. Uh, to members of the House January 6th panel are introducing a bill to reform the Electoral College Act. Liz Cheney and Zoe Lefgren are sponsoring the Presidential Election Reform Act, which would make clear the role of the vice president is to preside over the counting of the electoral votes in the purely ministerial, excuse me, ministerial role. Now, the bill comes as a result of Donald Trump's attempt to use former Vice President Mike Pence as interference in the House of Representatives certifying the 2020 election on January 6 in 2021. Senate Democrats are preparing themselves for the possibility that there may be a divided government. Now, polls show the Democrats with a decent chance at keeping control of the Senate, but losing the House. That means Kevin McCarthy would take over as the House majority leader from Nancy Pelosi. Uh, a House control by the GOP means by the end of the January 6th committee, it will come to an end for its investigation into the insurrection. It would also mean possible hearings into the president's son, Hunter Biden's personal finances. Democrats say the House would be a tool for Donald Trump to get back at the Democrats. Mm -hmm. Herschel Walker is admitting that he is not that smart. The GOP Senate hopeful made the statement last week as he prepares for next month's debate against Senator Raphael Warnock. When asked by reporters what kind of preparation he was doing for the debate, Walker says Warnock is a preacher, he's a smart man, and he wears nice suits, and he will embarrass him at the debate. Now, the debate, which has been negotiated for weeks, is scheduled for November, excuse me, October 14th. Uh, do we think that Herschel is trying to lower expectations mm. by, you know, kind of poking fun at himself and saying, I'm not that smart because we know, everyone knows that uh, Raphael Warnock is going to come out the gate and he's going to bring it. And uh, we know that Herschel Walker is not. I yeah. do believe that he is trying to, like we said in the beginning of the show, pull on the heartstrings. I do believe this is a, a disclaimer, right? This is a this disclaimer to letting you know, don't have, you, you know what, yes, to answer your question, <laughs> yes is the answer. Because I was going to say the same thing that you said, just in a different way. Yes is the answer. He's trying to pretty much, you know, get us to not have such high expectations for this. But also, I do believe he's trying to pull on the heartstrings of Americans to say, hey, you know what, you know what, I'm the underdog. You guys mm -hmm. vote for me because I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the best that I can in the underdog in a lot of particular uh, particular situations does end up winning sometimes and so I believe that this is all a part of his plan and I hope that uh, the, those in Georgia do not fall for it because I believe yeah. that this is definitely some something that was crafted up together hey let's go on and say that you're not that smart they'll vote for the underdog they'll, <laughs> you know they'll want to they'll want to choose for the guy who's really trying to do his very well, best well look you know I think he's going to try and bring humor to this debate obviously he's already kind of doing it right now yeah. right? I can mm. easily see him saying well of course you would know better than I would Senator Warnock because you're the smart smart guy. I, I yes, can hear stuff like that go, to kind of mm -hmm. like downplay his dumbness, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I'm ready for it. I can't wait to see it. I'm hoping we all can see it. Mm -hmm. A spokesperson for Walker said that he was being sarcastic. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think what you said, Romeo, that's exactly what we're seeing here, right? Like, mm -hmm. he's going to try and play that card. Well, I don't know. What do you think? You're the smart person, right? And so um, he's just they're just gearing us up for mm -hmm. it. They're laying the groundwork right Absolutely. now. That's what we're seeing. It's a show. It's, it's a definitely show. a show. This is the, the prelude. So we'll, yes. we'll, we'll see how that all, <laughs> yes. how that all turns yeah. out. Now, New York City is looking at taking legal action against Texas Governor Greg Abbott for sending buses of asylum seekers to the city. The news came. Six more buses from Texas arrived in the city over the weekend. Now, Eric Adams, Mayor Eric Adams, he says that he may use cruise ships to house the migrants. At least 11,000 migrants have been sent to the city from Texas since May. Abbott says that he wants to send the people to democratically controlled states to show others how border stands deal 
with immigration problems. Now, the city has opened 23 emergency shelters and is expected to open 38 more. Uh, now, I was the, the headline, of course, first yesterday, I was like, what? You want to put people on cruise ships? Um, I tried to find and Mimi, I'm not sure if you saw or Romeo, if you saw. I don't believe that these are cruise ships that are actively moving, like people that are like, Romeo, you were just on right. a cruise. I don't mm-hmm. believe that they're going to be on the cruise with you. I don't think that that no. is what the goal is, of no. course. I want, because there were people online that were like, wait, what? I'm going to be going to the Bahamas. <laughs> you know, So I want to make sure we clear that up for our soulmates. Um, and Eric Adams, he said, hey, we're trying to do everything that we can. We're trying to find, even with the 23 shelters that are opening, that 38, they simply do not have enough to house everybody. They said that this is, you know, we're doing the best that we can. So if they're not moving, you won't be with them. I mean, hey, why, why not? Why yeah. not have them here? I don't really see anything wrong. As long as I, we're not going to be with them, I don't see yeah. anything wrong with this, personally. Well, I just got off a cruise, like you said, and I can see being there for a few days. But for someone living there, right, let's talk about it being clean, the sanitariness of it. Let's talk about all of that because we talk about a very small cabin. Um, who's going to work in that environment to keep it clean, right? Because you have to go in there and do that. If you don't, Mm -hmm. like, that's going to add up. And then what happens to the cruise ships after this portion of or this part is done? Like, how do they rebuild that? How do people want to go back on that ship? So we know they're trying to build, they're trying to build out where they can say, look, hotel rooms are available. They should make sure, make sure someone gets in there. Now we're talking about cruise ships. I don't think this is the greatest idea. Mm -hmm. We have to figure out something, maybe something temporarily, but I wouldn't suggest something like this. Yeah, uh, you just said the key word. He said this is this is a temporary exactly. idea. They said that um, right now, New York, um, of course, they opened up 23 emergency shelters, but they're having a crisis, a housing crisis. Um, New York City has a law that says everyone who is seeking a roof or a bed that is homeless uh, can find one at a homeless shelter. And so they're running out of space. And so they just have nowhere to put everyone. And we know that these buses keep rolling in and we never know when they're coming because the governors from the southern states that are sending them there think it's a joke. So they, of course, don't call and let people know that they are uh, bringing in a bunch of people. And so they're just trying to figure out where to put them. Um, I don't know, like you said, Romeo, if this is, uh, you know, the solution, but it is a solution. And so um, I guess we're just going to have to see what happens because yeah. they have nowhere literally to put these people. Think about New York. People who already live there live yeah. in closets and under stairs mm-hmm. and in basements that look like closets. Yeah. Think about that already. Yeah. You know, you, know, you think about the story, too, Mimi and Romeo, 11,000 people. If you, just basic math, right? If 11,000 11, people come to New York and the hotels don't want the people, the show, the show are full they don't have family for 11,000 people that just came there it's no housing where else can you put 2,000 3,000 people yeah. very quickly a, a, you think about a cruise ship that's just sitting there if it's not moving not docking mm-hmm. you think about somewhere temporary it doesn't sound, I can't think of any anywhere else where you could like you said you could put two in a room Technically, if we're being honest here, a cruise ship is probably but more... You can put four in a room. Four in a room. How about a cruise ship is probably more comfortable than being on a shelter where it's all shared and you might not have your own private room. If you think about it, for a temporary housing that's not moving, a cruise ship to sit there for a couple of months, I'm sure they're going to have somebody clean it out before and after. Yeah. 2,000 people can go in a few. Doesn't sound very bad to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Just definitely have to do something, so we'll yeah. see for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, we will. All right, believers in former President Trump's election fraud lies are challenging voters' right to cast ballots. Laws around the country allow for these people to even contest registrations of thousands of voters at a time. Election denial activists are flooding election offices across the country with public records requests. They are threatening lawsuits and clogging up voter registration offices with work. And Hurricane Fiona has made landfall in the Dominican Republic, leaving more than one million people without electricity. The Category 3 storm with winds topping 115 miles an hour is expected to just get stronger. This comes just days after destroying Puerto Rico, which was hit over the weekend with flooding and mudslides. It's been five years to the day since Puerto Rico was destroyed by Hurricane Maria. The Category 5 storm took the lives of more than 3,000 people and left billions in damage. President Biden, he has issued a state of emergency for Puerto Rico. He issued that on Sunday, which is now on federal, which will unlock federal funding, which means FEMA can go in and support those island residents. Mm -hmm. A Colorado judge is allowing the redacted release of an amended autopsy report on the death of Elijah McClain. So what's happening here is that McClain is the young black man who died in police custody in Aurora, Colorado in 2019 after cops put him in a restraint 
restraint and injected ketamine into his body. Colorado, uh, Colorado's new outlet sued the county coroner's office for the release of the report after it was learned in a grand jury probe that the report had been changed. The original coroner's report at the time said that McLean's cause of death could not be determined. A new report could help prosecutors in finding uh, that pending case against three cops and two paramedics facing manslaughter charges in his death. A female Washington state cop is in trouble for posting a video on social media bragging about being above the law. Take a look. If we're driving on the freeway in our police car, get the f out of the way. Get the f out of the way. If you merge and we follow behind you and we merge too, you're probably in trouble. Best way to find that out is get the f out of the way. I can go 90 miles an hour. You can't. That's Federal Way Office Brianna Strauss. She posted the video on TikTok. Once the video went viral, her supervisors found out she was suspended for 10 hours and given two conduct violations. So here's a woman that looks like she's actually on the clock while she's working, making this video. Right? She's in the car, she's in the uniform. But this could be very dangerous because if you think about it, if this is how she feels, how many others? And I don't think she's been on the force that long, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. So what about those that's been there and seen a lot of bad things or, or maybe been treated a certain way or had to deal with certain things? This is all bad. Mm -hmm. So how do we fix this problem? I have no idea. But to see this come from her, so being, being on the force for such a short time, that's a problem, and that's scary for a lot of people on the streets. Yeah, I mean, Romeo, she's been on the force for less than a year. Mm -hmm. Honey, you are barely above the law, okay? You are, you're <laughs> you're inching your way even into being a part of the law, being on the force. You're pretty much where we are, okay? You just have a badge and just a, a, a training in a car. So yeah. for her to even give us all of this TikTok action is just like, really, you know? But also, I would hate to be pulled over for her, by her because mm -hmm. she seems like that person that would love to use the fact that she has a badge, has a car, a, 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 a a couple weeks of training and use that against a black person to be able to say, hey, I'm better than you. People like this irk me to my core because you get jobs like this in order to be able to fill up, fulfill your dreams of being able to let the world know that you really feel like you're above the law. And since you've been there for a few months, yeah. please bring it down a few notches. Yeah. Uh, get jobs like this so that you can be able to be a bully to other people, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, a lot of people are online are talking about how, like, if this is a public service announcement that no one asks for, <laughs> usually they do it without the cursing, right, without the um, sarcasm and all the other things that she gave us. So um, I don't – did she get punished for this by chance? You uh, know? Yeah, uh, she, 10 hours. That's a shift. She, she got suspended, suspended for a mm -hmm. shift. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And she was looked like she was on her shift while she was making this TikTok video. So she got a day off from work. That's basically Pretty what much. happened. And probably paid. The one thing probably that I paid. always tell you guys all the time is that TikTok is a dark place. TikTok yeah. makes you wanna it makes you just wanna fiend for the likes, for the follows, for all of this, for the views, for the viral, mm -hmm. and then you literally end up getting getting out of character or saying something out of character, and it's just, it's really a, a, a dark place, because I feel like, what would even make a cop one even, girl, you're on the clock, you should be fighting crime, or finding some people speeding or doing something of value she's versus making She's on trying to flex, and she's Absolutely. looking like a fool. Yeah, right, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah for real. Alright, soulmates, a black man in Oakland was arrested and accused of stealing his own truck. His wife is now speaking out about the incident. Nicole Hirsch says her husband Ian Simmons was approached by a couple who said his 1999 white Ford pickup was stolen and belonged to Simmons and belonged to them. Simmons reportedly told the couple it wasn't theirs. They called the cops who came and handcuffed him before even asking for his identification. Oakland police say they eventually released Simmons after they were able to confirm the vehicle actually did belong to him. Hirsch, who was white, says it's hard to believe a white man sitting in his own truck would have gone through what her husband experienced. In a practice known all across the South as convict leasing, convict leasing, black arrest, black people arrested for minor offenses were put to dangerous and very much so deadly work. States releasing prisoners out to private companies for a fee. It was all a practice known all across the South as convict leasing. Convict leasing was essentially a new form of slavery that started after the Civil War and went on for decades across the South. States and companies got rich by arresting mostly black men and then forcing them to work for major companies. The United States Steel Corporation, founded by American business giants, they used those convict laborers, uh, laborers for at least five years in Alabama in the early 1900s, but has never spoken openly about this very dark chapter of its history. The company agreed for the first time to sit down and talk with members of the affected community. That's good.